And we must uh, move on to questions to the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure, uh, and just inform members that questions 7 and 11 have been withdrawn. And I call Mr. Loris Kelly. Uh, question 1, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for her question. <clears throat> DCAL is currently considering five business cases. These business cases are at various stages, and my officials are continuing to work with the relevant organisations to ensure that each individual case is of sufficient quality to facilitate a timely decision on the investment of public funds. And in addition to this, DCAL has also provided feedback on a further two business cases and is awaiting the submission of revised drafts. Work is also ongoing within the Department on the development of a further four business cases in respect of projects which we hope to progress in the near future. Um, I thank the Minister, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, for her answer. I take it then there are nine different business cases in total, if there are five plus the four. But could the Minister give us a flavour of what the business cases are, the impact on the budget, will spend be met, and indeed what does that mean if some of them are within, uh, to be spent within a school term timetable? Um, well, I'm not too sure about the school term timetable. I mean, I'm just going by my own timetable, but certainly in terms of the flavour of some of the business cases. And while it's nine today, I could go in next week and there could be a further two there. That's the nature of the progression, which is a good thing because it means they we're moving in the right direction. But certainly, uh, we're looking at the refurbishment of Coleraine Library at over £2 million, the Arts Council gifting of musical instruments at almost £60,000, at Tullymore National Outdoor Centre, over well, almost £2.5 million at this stage, at Dungiven Sports Provision, uh, Oma Riding for the Disabled, um, and certainly looking at the Ulster Canal, Taybuck, and the strategic outline business cases for the sub regional stadium programmes. Thank you. And I call Mr. Paul Gibbon. Okay. With the Speaker's permission, I will take questions 2, 4, 6 and 15 together. The 2014 Giro d'Italia Big Start has certainly been a resounding success and once again we have shown the world how well we can host and enjoy major sporting and cultural events. The Giro is a fantastic event and the 2014 Big Start has helped raise the profile of cycling across all our communities here. Dee Callan Sport and I are working very closely with the governing body of the Sports Cycle in Ireland to deliver a number of specific actions set out within NITB-led Giro legacy plan to develop the sport of cycling and increase participation within clubs and all communities throughout. These actions include the development and implementation of cycling strategies and also the provision of training for leaders and coaches in cycling clubs across the north. Sport and I is also engaging with schools and through their active schools programme will help to encourage them to develop linkages with local cycling clubs to increase participation and the development of sport. Mr. Given for supplementary. Can I thank the, the Minister for that response? And she rightly identifies the great success uh, that the Giro d'Italia uh, was. Um, can the Minister assure the House that uh, she'll work with her DRD Minister so that the infrastructure can be improved across Northern Ireland to benefit those that take part in cycling? And that also working with the cycling clubs that uh, those from a, a socially deprived background can also be encouraged uh, to get into this particular sport to help them, uh, given that the health benefits that often come with this activity. I can, and I'm quite happy to give that member the assurance. I'm not just working with DRD, as he's mentioned, but also working with his own colleague, Arlene Foster, uh, and indeed my own colleague, Michelle O'Neill, in terms of DARD, because well, certainly we need to ensure that we have the roads infrastructure to look at road cycling. We also need to look at track. Uh, cycling as well, which has become a very popular sport and increasingly popular across all social strata. And the member may be aware, uh, although Colin is probably maybe just outside his area, but certainly within the Lisburn area, the VC Glendale Club had certainly enjoyed £10,000 as a result of the legacy of the World Peace and Fire Games to try and get specifically what the member uh, pointed to children from socially deprived backgrounds, not just the partisan the bikes and cycling equipment but to get them actively involved in the sport and also um, potentially some coaching and training programmes around it. Well, Mr. Dahi McKay. Sure, I got a, a pretty last concord. Can I thank the Minister for her answer? Uh, indeed, the year was a great success with scenery 
uh, from the north and the entire island uh, broadcast across the world. And I suppose the best things uh, were in places like Carnlock uh, and Ballycastle. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Can, can I ask the Minister, uh, uh, on the back of the previous uh, answer, could she outline uh, what plans her department has for future funding uh, in terms of cycling as a sport uh, and obviously the, the health benefits that that will have? I thank the member for his question. Also, I'm not going to get into a dispute which part of the island was the best looking, but certainly I did see, like many others, like many millions, I'm sure, seeing the spectacular uh, sights of the cyclists going down Carnlock and the horses on the beach. Absolutely great. Um, certainly in terms of the sport and the potential for health, I don't think it's lost on any of us. And, and indeed, Evan Poots and other ministers have been actively involved in looking how we can use a power sport to decrease childhood obesity and promote better health, uh, mental health in particular. Uh, sport NI has made an indicative award uh, to Cycling Ireland to carry out a high performance review, and this is done in conjunction with Cycling Ulster. We will certainly keep it under review, but certainly cycling is one of the sports that thankfully this year will help increase numbers coming to it and hopefully help others, including schools and other clubs um, who have maybe got cycling as a third and fourth cousin, for want of a better term, to get involved. And that will help the business cases that are currently underway to make sure that we have not only the proper facilities, but we have the long-term support and promotion of cycling for years ahead. Call Mr. Sidney Anderson. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And I thank the Minister for her responses so far, and she certainly has touched on some of the issues that I have would have been interested in, and certainly the, the, the Giro has been a, a great success. But, Minister, for some years now, cycling has been uh, recognised as a competitive sport for the disabled. Can uh, you outline how that particular aspect of cycling can be developed by the, Depar the Department and by Sport NI? Well, uh, the Member may be aware um, we have a very good working relationship with Disability Sports NI, and that will continue. And certainly that relationship uh, will strengthen as they take forward their review, their ongoing review of facilities management and certainly what facilities are for those with disabilities. Cycling and many other sports are part of that as well and certainly the, the role of the Euro but certainly even the role of the Olympic and Paralympic Games in particular have helped us bring a different degree of focus on needs around particularly the disabilities, sports and cycling on this uh, occasion. And you know, just to I suppose, I suppose repeat again that were there gaps, particularly for those with disabilities, we need to make sure that they have our focus first and then we need to work out the rest later. Because participation is for everybody, not for those with abilities, participation is for everybody and it's really important that those with disabilities are at the very top of the objective need uh, criteria. I call Mr Roy Biggs. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, declaring it as a, as a casual cyclist, an occasional cyclist, but cycling can benefit an individual's health and well-being, the environment, and indeed the hospitality sector. Can the minister advise us how she's building on the success of the Giro d'Italia to encourage more of my constituents to cycle and to improve facilities for those who may wish to visit it? Well, primarily that is a question for Daddy. Uh, I'm not passing the book. Daddy has been very proactive in terms of the tourism potential around sporting events, particularly in the member's own constituency, <clears throat> which would primarily be a rural constituency. Um, what we need to do, first of all, is to try and get casual cyclers back on the road, back on their bikes, back on the tracks, wherever the case may be, and certainly for others to visit, certainly good. Uh, food spots across the north and indeed across the island and help regenerate the local economy. Um, cycling is one aspect, but certainly angling is another. And there are other sports where certainly the regeneration of the economy will be supported through hosting and promoting better sporting events. Call Mr Dominic Bradley. I thank the member for his question. My department has responsibility for one of the seven headline actions in the Together Building a United Community strategy, namely the development of a cross-community youth sports programme. DECAL is currently designing a pilot project for implementation in 2014-15. This pilot will then inform the department's signature programme 
which will be rolled out across the north in subsequent years. The cross-community sports programme has the potential to be a vital element of the T-Book strategy by delivering a meaningful and sustained impact on good relations through, through, the, through the transformative power of sport. In line with other strategic actions, DECAL will continue to use culture, arts and sports to improve equality and good relations in order to reflect the joined-up approach required by the strategy, and DECAL will also contribute to the other headline actions as and when appropriate. Call Dominic Bradley for supplement. And Chuckle he a vino doing a caddied sporting a vest a vest a guest a cahirah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the minister for her answer. Could I ask the minister, can she at this stage outline in a little more detail uh, which sports would be involved and how the programme will operate? Well, certainly at this stage we're looking at as many sports as possible, uh, not just the, the big three, although they're very important, particularly um, in areas which experience a lot of social deprivation. You're primarily talking about soccer, Gaelic games and rugby. Um, but we're, also, um, we're looking also at um, other programmes and other sports, and particularly around coaching and training led initiatives within those sports, um, because it isn't just about while it's very, very important the participation of people in sports and physical activity, it's also particularly for children and young people who have, for some reason, who are in the NEETS, what they call the NEETS category, need to have a way out. And those people, by and large, have been excellent ambassadors and role models within their sports. So we're using these programmes as a way for their, not only to help their career development, but also to introduce sports which aren't traditionally played within those areas. But given the fact that we're looking exclusively at deprived areas. We're also looking at rural areas as well. So whatever sports are popular within those communities, and it could be cycling and it could be others, we need to make sure that they're included as well. Call Mr. Alistair Ross. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. The Minister will be aware I've written to her about a proposed snooker, a cross-community snooker initiative supported by professionals here in Northern Ireland, Mark Allen and, and Joe Swale. Can the Minister indicate whether she will be supportive of such a scheme which could benefit from funding through the TBUC? Uh, funding initiative and whether she will agree to meet with me and uh, representatives of Mark Allen and Joe Swale to see how we can move this forward? Well, certainly um, I'm happy at this stage for officials to meet the member and certainly to meet after it get all the information. I think it's a good initiative, it's a good idea uh, because it is about, as I said earlier, we're, we're much lacking in good positive role models within parts of our community and certainly the, the, the role that our sports men and women have played, have acted as really good ambassadors and role models, and snooker is one of those sports. So I'm happy for officials to meet, to take initial sentence, and then to meet the member with the organisers thereafter. Um, I've done the same thing with boxing, and there are other sporting initiatives coming to me, and from what I've seen thus far, albeit at a very preliminary stage, it looks very good, and, it, and it's actually good that it's joined up, because we can ensure that everybody, where possible, has an opportunity. Thank you. And call Mr. George Robinson. Question five, uh, Mr. Clinton, Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for his question. Primary responsibility for the funding of events, including the Mill Cup, as a member knows, lies in the first instance with Daddy. However, Sports NI, uh, as a, an arm's length body of DECAL, has not received a request for funding for the 2014 Mill Cup. However, in anticipation of my department receiving a, a request, a bid has been submitted for the June monitoring round for additional funding for creative and cultural development in the North West, which will include the Milk and Foil Cups in this bid, hopefully. In addition, Sport and I have met with the organisers of the Milk Cup event to discuss potential support in future years. Sport and I is currently carrying out a post-programme evaluation of the Pilot International Sports Events Programme and a decision on the future direction of the programme will be based on the results of this evaluation. If this prog programme reopens, sports events such as a Milk Cup may be eligible to apply provided they satisfy the criteria. But looking ahead, collaborative work between DECAL and DADI will continue to bring forward a number of major, major sporting events such as the Rugby World Cup to help ensure that we continue to benefit from 
hosting major sport and cultural events such as the Malcolm Foyle Cups. Well, Mr. Robinson, for a supplement. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Deputy Speaker, as this is a very pres prestigious event and brings so many people to your province, and particularly the North Coast in general, um, can the Minister do you all in her power to make sure that there is funding made available for this uh, terrific uh, sporting event, which attracts so many people from all over the world? Well, I'm sure the member will um, agree that despite this and the foil cup uh, competitions it's been betwixt and between between departments for a number of years which is really unfair however there is a big emphasis on this, on the organizations of these competitions to be part upon match fit and i know that my uh, colleagues and daddy have worked in conjunction with my colleagues in decal my officials in decal and with sport ni to try and ensure that these competitions continue as I said, I have made a bid. I will try and bring forward as an interim arrangement support, but I will uh, use this opportunity to implore to this, both, the, particularly the Mill Cup, as a member has asked a question directly about the Mill Cup, to talk to the uh, organisers of the competition to get in a bit more earlier and get a bit more strategic in terms of their funding package, which is essential to host this, this event. I call Mr. John Dallet. Uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for for her uh, answer, uh, and considered positive and offer no criticism whatsoever. But would the minister agree with me that the little games of ping pong between the departments must end, and that this particular competition is far too serious to be funded on an ad hoc basis? And will the minister do what she can to ensure that the organisers of this cup, who are a voluntary organisation, know from year to year what's happening? Otherwise, we will lose it. I, I totally agree with the member, and since this particular comp competition happens in his constituency, I'm sure he will also acknowledge that I too am fed up with the ping ponging and have lifted the responsibility for this because it isn't fair on the organisers, although they have a responsibility to get a bit more secure sponsorship and funding here. But more so, it's really unfair on the kids who look forward to taking part in this competition and their clubs and their families who do it on a voluntary basis and who go to some considerable expense themselves in order to fulfil their children's ambition to play in this competition. And I understand that because it's these competitions, the Milk Cup in particular, is done on a voluntary basis, I would like to see some support to get them in a better position so they're not coming at the last minute. They need to be coming at the start of the year giving us all an opportunity to see what we can do around the last minute, because it looks like it's an afterthought. And I can say on behalf of Daddy that from the conversations that I've had and the work that we've done, it isn't an afterthought for them. But both departments are frustrated in the way these competitions have been brought forward. Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, can I ask the Minister how she is assisting with the development of youth football within the community voluntary sector within my constituency so that we are sending more homegrown talent to world class tournaments like the Milk Cup? Um, it's the first opportunity I've had to welcome the member, um, so you're very welcome. And I would uh, urge the member to check even her uh, late colleagues' questions in relation to this because. We have supported a lot of grassroots community uh, sport initiatives, particularly soccer, within that constituency. We have worked not just around uh, football for young boys, but also for young girls to make sure that it's an inclusive process, and we'll continue to do so. Um, and also worked very, very well with Coleraine Borough Council to make sure that not only these competitions, namely the Milk Cup, but certainly other competitions, which help even very young children in very junior leagues, become involved in sport and physical activity. Mr. Raymond McCartney. Uh, <clears throat> I've got a pre last coming quarter about school and play against Lesson and Era. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her answers and indeed commend her for her support for the Mill Cup. In, in her previous answer to George Robinson, she, she talked about the Foil Cup. Uh, would the Minister take this opportunity perhaps to provide some update with what discussions she's had with the organisers of that competition? Um, I thank the member for a supplementary question, um, and I know that the decal officials and certainly Sport NI have had some discussions, particularly 
in relation to the uh, as part of the legacy of the city of culture um, as I said to uh, George Robinson that a bid has been submitted in the June monitoring round in relation to the uh, legacy of the city culture which will include the foil cup and the milk cups hopefully and I also um, as I have stated previously working very very closely with colleagues in Daddy and also closely with uh, the NITB in terms of a new strategy strategy for events which I believe will go up until 2020 to make sure that these competitions are seen and given the same equality as golfing competitions, cycling competitions, motorcycle racing, racing and other competitions because they do attract an international audience, international competitors and it's important that we talk about grassroots, that we support these examples, good examples of grassroots soccer in this case. Thank you. And I call Mr. Danny Kinahan. Question eight, Principal Deputy Speaker, please. I don't know if it's election fatigue or issues are flying through these questions, but sorry for the delay in getting them a feet. I thank the member for his, his question, and DECON, <coughs> pardon me, was involved in a recent review to inform the development of a new England strategy. The Strategic Review of England 2013 was commissioned by Sport NI and the Tourist Board in association with the Locks Agency, DECAL and Land Fisheries Group and the governing bodies involved in England. The review highlights the potential to develop the sport of England and the contribution it can make to promoting equality, tackling poverty and social exclusion in developing England, particularly in terms of tourism. The report also reflects on the current governance arrangements in England and makes a number of recommendations including the establishment of an England forum to enhance engagement between the agencies and the governing bodies and various stakeholders. I call Mr. Kinnahan for... Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for her answer, and it's good to have uh, departments working together. Um, but angling isn't just game and course fishing, it's also sea angling. And I wonder, would the Minister review who she's speaking to to make sure that sea angling is fully included in it and that she, the department is talking to the right people? Well, what I can do is certainly check, because I'm sensing that the member has a concern that maybe some of the people he's been talking to have been left out, and I'm happy to talk to a member if that is the case about that. And if that is the case, try and make sure that they're included in these ongoing discussions, because as a member has, and he has asked consistently questions on this, we have tried our best to include as many people as possible, because it is a very popular sport, it's a growing sport, it's also particularly important for rural communities. Um, but we need to make sure that as many people as possible have had the opportunity to become involved in this. This is a very significant review. And even if people don't feel that all the recommendations are theirs, they can certainly <coughs> feel that they were included in the process at arising to some of these recommendations that will certainly com come as a result of this review. Thank you. And I call Mr. Ian Mull. Uh, Kester Bernie, question number nine. the whole. It must be everybody's tired because no one's getting to their feet at all. Okay, in terms of um, DECAL is supportive of Marhafel District Council's proposal to develop a Seamus Haney Interpretive Centre in Balahi. I have met with the member and representatives of the Haney family and Marhafel District Council to indicate my support for the proposal and these discussions have been continued at official level. I am committed that the meeting to seek executive support to the establishment of this Seamus Haney Centre, as proposed by the Haney family, will be an important and certainly regional and international attraction. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answer thus far. Um, as a native of Balahi, uh, I'm delighted to see Seamus Haney being recognised in such uh, a significant way locally. And I'd like to commend Marfal District Council and DECAL uh, for their commitment to the project. And can I ask the Minister uh, if she could give the House an indication of a timeline for this development? Um, I thank the member for his supplementary as well. I mean, as he knows, because he led the delegation, has been leading the delegation, um, I mean, this is intended to be a three year project, but certainly I'm taking the Maharfal District Council are are de taking the lead on this and certainly have come to my department. I'm sure they'll be going to others for support. Um, 
I am aware that the Council is at initial stages of the procurement process and planning permission is pending. Um, so until that happens, I am unable to offer him certainly a more specific timeline um, at this stage, but certainly it's one that I've no doubt um, will be made aware of in the future. But it is encouraging to see at this stage that so much support for this facility, which I have no doubt will be a major tourist attraction, not just for Mid Ulster, but indeed for the, the North and the rest of the island. I'm hoping that we soon find out exactly what the details are, and I'll be happy to share those with the member. Mrs. Overend, for a supplement. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. And indeed, it is important that uh, Seamus Heaney's family are at the centre of the the organisation of the Seamus Heaney Centre in Balaki. Can I ask the Minister if there was any consideration to using Balaki Bon eh, for the Seamus Heaney Centre? So the Turfman Monument stands just outside eh, the Balaki Bon. It was unveiled by Seamus Heaney about five years ago. Eh, what sort of assessment was made um, for that consideration? And how does eh, the Minister square the circle that Balaki Bon eh, is now closed due to lack of funds, yet there's finance found eh, to build a new centre? Um, I, I think there are questions that the member needs to raise with Maharfeld District Council, uh, certainly not with myself. Uh, I don't have the detail, but um, the member will know or should know um, within her own constituency how these things happened and what stage they're at now. But it's certainly something she needs to raise with Maharfeld District Council. Mr. Fergal McKinney. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, question number 10. Thank the member for his question. The redevelopment of Ravenhill, which involved the construction of two new stands at the Aquinas and Memorial ends of the ground and the replacement of the existing grandstand, has seen the capacity rise from 11,000 to 18,000. This was very successful and has been delivered in time and within budget. The success of this project can be attributed to a number of factors, such as the appropriate governance structures established at the beginning of the project and maintained throughout the project. Uh, cycle, the successful partnership working between the governing body and DECAL and the approach to the delivery of social and economic returns is focused on delivering the maximum benefits to the local community and maximum opportunities for long-term unemployed and apprenticeships. The same governance structures and partnerships working arrangements have been applied to both Windsor Park and Casement Park projects to ensure successful delivery of both programmes. call Mr McKinney for a supplement. Mr. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, I'd just like to uh, touch on one point that the Minister has said, and I'm not sure if you've already answered the question, but has the, has the awarding of the contracts included in them social clauses uh, to encourage those or offer those who are in, uh, not in education uh, or training or employment opportunities uh, in employment and apprenticeships? Absolutely. Um, all the three stadia programmes have had very robust social clauses involved while working with Dale particularly around the needs and apprenticeships very, very closely. We're also working with other executive colleagues because these are the first uh, robust social clauses within the executive, and I'm happy to share those with other executive colleagues. And it is incumbent upon us, should it be stadia, housing, education, hospitals, roads, whatever infrastructure and capital infrastructure we're building and developing, we must ensure that the benefits for people who are worst affected are realised within those contracts. Now, uh, uh, I thank the Minister for her answers. And I wonder, could you tell us how the, these new stadiums will be integrated uh, within the local communities? Well, I suppose it's a follow on from the primary question that Fergal asked. Uh, it's very, very important that not only do we have the social clauses, the people who live, and sometimes work around the perimeter of the stadium aren't outside looking in. But we also need to make sure that there's community facilities within those stadia. So, for example, I know in Ravenhill will be an education centre. They're working with Aquinas. They're also working with people from the Craigie estate. There has been a meeting last week, particularly with people from the Craigie partnership, to ensure that they aren't uh, spectators within the development of Ravenhill. And I have every reason to believe that that won't be the case. I've also had meetings with the people at Windsor Park, with the IFA and stakeholders within that community and done the same thing in West Belfast around casement. So it's about not just the developing opportunities during the construction, but to make sure that the post-construction opportunities don't end and will be not only developed in the future, but also will be used as a catalyst to bring other investment within those areas. I call Mr. Michael McGimsey. 
Deputy Speaker, uh, can I ask the Minister, in respect of these uh, developments, that they are wonderful opportunities of major investment in areas of serious uh, disadvantage, and for example, Windsor Park in the heart of the village, uh, and would she agree with me that this needs to be part of a wider redevelopment, for example, rehousing in the village, uh, education, uh, Belfast City Council investment as well, that all of these go together uh, uh, and that one without the other uh, uh, we are losing somewhat. And would you agree to encourage uh, other ministers to ensure that their departments actually match what DECAL is doing in looking at redevelopment beyond simply sport? Thank you. Um, so I agree with everything the member has said, and even within his own constituency, he can look at the recent example of the development of Windsor Park and Belfast City Council in terms of the Olympic uh, Leisure Centre. But you're right, there are other opportunities around housing, around hospitals, health centres, education, community facilities, and community facilities with the new RPA, super councils. These investments have the opportunity to bring other investments in and to make sure that they're seamless links, because these communities, for, for decades, have not seen the investment that they should have. And while it's starting, and it's a good start, none of us should take the opportunity, or none of us should take the attitude that that's it and we're done. It's a, it's a start and that's all it is. Thank you, and uh, that ends the period for oral questions, and we'll now move on to topical questions. The first three names on the list have been withdrawn within the appropriate timeline. I call Ms. Dolores Kelly. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister uh, for an update on the uh, uh, publishing of the uh, Irish language and Ulster Scott strategy, and could she clarify whether or not there, that the publishing of one is dependent on the other being ready for publishing? Well, the member will be, I thank the member for raising this issue because um, it gives me an opportunity to say that um, certainly they're with translation at the minute, the strategies. Um, <clears throat> one won't be published without the other. I will be decoupling these strategies, either both go or none go, um, because I have given both equal status, I have given both equal respect, and I expect others to do likewise. I call Ms Kelly for a supplement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Um, I know, Minister, there's been difficulties in trying to draw up for some time uh, uh, an Ulster Scots uh, dictionary, for example. I was, that's why I was concerned. But could the Minister give us an indication of what uh, budget, if any, she has for the implementation of the strategies? The member may be aware, through even her own colleague um, in DOE, uh, that all departments need to invest in these strategies because they become executive strategies because they're part of the programme for government. I anticipate the translation being done through the summer to begin again the round of uh, discussions with executive colleagues about what funding they are going to bring to these strategies and hope to bring it forward uh, at the beginning of a new session of the Assembly after the summer. But the members right, it is really important that these strategies not are just given equal respect, but they are also given investment. Thank you. And I call Mrs. Karen McKevitt. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I ask the Minister, was she aware of the successful preview of the Peace Line project, a joint short movie collaboration by Peter Ferris Entertainment and David Lloyd Foundation, uh, which was based on the troubles and peace process in Northern Ireland at the Cannes Film Festival, uh, which was held a few weeks back? Um, no, I wasn't aware of it. Um, and I, have, I wasn't aware of it at the time, but have since became aware of it. Uh, and not only does it give us all an opportunity to congratulate our local film uh, television uh, producers, but also uh, shores up the need that to appreciate what NI Screen are doing with our local producers. And not only that, but to use sometimes a very difficult subject that as politicians we either can't or won't get our heads around that we can do it to the medium of arts. Thanks, Principal, De er, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, the global fil film industry is, is huge and, and it gives and showcases uh, parts of this island that, that you could never buy. Um, what uh, support would your department be able to offer the like of the Ferris Entertainment as a company which is looking to grow um, in the global industry? Well, the member will be happy to know that I'm looking at additional, I've made a bid for additional funding to DNI Screen who can then help local companies because it's unfair even appreciate, you know, sometimes members are asked to raise specific projects and programmes. But certainly what we need to make sure is that embryonic programmes, projects, companies that will get support, which will help secure other support for them in the future, are supported. And NI Screen have been and will continue to be very supportive of them. I call Mr Paul Given. 
Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. The Minister will be aware of the Salto Gymnastics Facility within my own constituency and the uh, business case for its uh, further development. Is, would the Minister be able to give an update on that? Uh, at the minute, I have no update on the business case itself, but certainly very, very familiar with Salto and the work that it's done. Uh, I mean, I have been a regular visitor to Salto and indeed Lisburn Records Club, which is another excellent facility within the members' constituency. But to give some reassurance to him, things are moving in the right direction. Certainly, it may be frustrating, certainly for people in this case in Salto. It might seem a bit tedious, but I need to make sure that every I dot and every T is crossed. Given for a supplement. Can I thank the Minister for that? And, and I certainly understand uh, wanting to dot the I's and cross the T's. In the past, Sport NI had made local authorities often go through business cases and money was expended. Uh, but at the end of that process, the money ultimately wasn't there to take forward a scheme, and that was lost money. Can she give me the assurance in this House that this scheme, won't, once ultimately the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, that the resources will be brought forward to actually then implement the business case once it's approved? Well, what I can assure the member of, and indeed his other colleagues, is that if the business case stacks up for Salt, Salt Hill Gym, then I'll go through the process of bidding to his colleague in order to get its support. I find it frustrating, and I've listened to the frustrations, particularly of councils but of clubs who have spent a lot of money that they don't really have a lot of in the first place in preparation for this, to be left sitting very disappointed and out of pocket. I want to avoid that. Uh, I want to make sure that there isn't uh, unnecessary bureaucracy for the sake of it, that everybody's taken a country attitude, that if people agree to do certain bits of work that it's done, and it's done in a timely fashion, in order to ensure the projects are not only delivered, but delivered in order that you can bid for the budget and that, that you aren't overcommitting yourself from one mandate to another. So I'm very aware of Salto's position, but the member needs to be aware of mine. Very supportive, but I need to make sure that everything's done and done properly. I call Ms. Michelle Michael Veen. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister for her assessment of the Arts Council's musical instruments for band scheme and if she will commit to future funding for the band community? Well, the member will be, a know, will be aware and will know that, um, that I have continued to give my support to the musical instruments for band scheme and will continue to do so as long as everything as it should be. Um, so in terms of bids, there are an awful lot of bids coming from my department in this monitoring round, unlike previous monitoring rounds. Um, not to, um, not to uh, be disrespectful to that process, because I don't believe you should do that. Any minister should do that in the House, to say that I have and will continue to give it support and hopefully will have a favourable outcome in the future. Michael Veen for a supplement. Okay, thank you. Um, the Minister will be aware that the recent scheme closed um, after a three-week opening period, which had very little, if any, advance notice um, to, to the community and limited um, publicity. Could the Minister ensure that this does not happen in the future? Um, I am disappointed to hear that, because uh, most people who apply for these grants, particularly small amounts of money, uh, are heavily engaged in voluntary activity, who are probably doing everything from washing cups to making tea to tuition. It's the last thing they need to be hit with a last minute or a very late deadline to put a substantial funding application in. So I can assure the member that I'll try and find out what happened and I'll happily write to her and give her an update. Thank you. And Mr. William Irwin is not in his place. I call Mr. Sean Lynn. Can I ask the Minister to give an update on the thousands of young eels that was killed at Ballyshannon ESB station recently? Well, it is with, with regret that I found out about the substantial uh, fish kill of the television. But just to assure the member, I know he's raised this before, I have met with representatives of Vern um, Anglin, and uh, I will continue to inquire what happened, what what lessons we need to learn to ensure it doesn't happen again. Make represents, representations to EASB, and also I've written to my um, Irish government uh, colleague, uh, Minister Fergus, Minister State Fergus uh, O'Dowd, to find out exactly what we can do next, because this seemed to be something that could have been totally avoided. Mr. Lynch, for a supplement. Goam Gwekas, Leishenair, and Fergusian. Um, can the Minister ensure that regular updates are provided, as in this incident the ESB clearly failed the uh, eel population and the 
eel fishermen in the Fermanagh uh, Lakeland area. Um, I can assure the member um, that I will do that and also I will go further. I will request a meeting with the ESB to make sure that the uh, service level agreement and the memorandum of understanding that they entered into around the protection of eels in, that, uh, in those waterways is protected, is done on a regular basis. And I will keep the member and other members who have brought this to my attention informed of any progress. Um, thank you, Minister. And as uh, Mr. Jim Allister is not in his place, uh, I will ask uh, members just to take their ease until the next item of business. Thank you.